main parameters one is the order quantity because we manufacture these devices mm. someone orders in 500 some orders in thousands mm. so uh, the order quantity, pricing yeah so the cost really varies a lot right. depending on uh, some of the buzzwords that i was noticing over here mm. Uh, one is AI, and then uh, the whole new uh, trend of blockchain. Yes. You know, blockchain somehow gives the impression that it uh, improves on accountability and traceability. Right. How does that happen yes. really at the grassroots level? That's right. At first, I will tell you how we have used AI in this device. Yeah. AI is very widely used. That's right. But uh, in our case, we have uh, an, uh, this airline guidelines by aircraft operators that. Mm. They cannot allow any electronic device to be transported hmm. on their aircraft, right. which emits radio frequency. Okay. Okay. That is the guideline by IATA. So what we have, so for that we have an, uh, something called as flight mode. Okay. So this device can automatically detect that it is inside a flight, right. and it turns off the radio okay. to be in compliance with IATA okay. rules. So how does it detect? Hmm. So that is where the AI comes in. Right. We have an accelerometer. That uh, uh, so what happens is uh, nothing accelerates like an aircraft on a runway. So yeah. that's the core uh, identification. Way, yeah. yeah way we are analyzing. Right. So but the signals are not so easy to uh, be detected. Hmm. Uh, so we have an accelerometer hmm. uh, that runs uh, uh, an AI, which can detect. That's uh, an aircraft. That, that, that is an aircraft which is accelerating on a runway. Yeah, as soon as the uh, aircraft uh, leaves the runway, it switches off. Travels to the flight mode. Yeah. So travels to the flight mode and switches off all the radio communications. Right. And as soon as it lands, it turns it back. Okay. Okay. So that is how we are using. Uh, but does it does it get through the package cargo screening typically because what they would they wouldn't know of this feature. So how do you get yeah. past that hurdle? Yeah, actually this was one of the core requirements by one of the clients mm. who are using because they do air shipments and for them to be able to do that. Track the air. Yeah. So on the uh, on the screening, uh, if if you can prove them that uh, this device does not transmit radio. Okay, then they're okay. Then they're okay. So okay. that's how it passes. Uh, right. And it sounds very convincing. Now, how do you sell this concept in India? In in India, uh, that is, uh, it is mostly very very cost sensitive. As mm. of now, uh, these devices are. How many would you would have sold? Are you just starting off? Uh, in India, we are starting off. Okay. But in India, our main uh, customers uh, who are for whom we see a lot of value mm. added to their business mm. are this and uh, and coal logistics companies. Right. There are a lot of coal, co uh, there, there are these coal, coal logistics companies mm. who are transporting mm. vaccines and other uh, medicines mm. uh, in the end mine. Right. Just like you have food deliveries uh, with a backpack. So there are these, uh, there are these uh, logistics companies who are, who are so you are typically e-commerce and uh, other packages. Yeah. Yeah. But, but these are temperature sensitive, sensitive products. products. Yeah. Right. So they put this in their bag mm. and they get the location mm. and the temperature line of all the delivery types. And it is very uh, yeah, helpful for them to be uh, to have the transparency right. and the real time. Uh, typically in a refer truck, yeah, you know, how, how useful this is because from what we've gathered over here, the eutectic containers and the typical JRP body containers, uh, even your clients like DHL, uh, Smart Trucking for instance, they have their own set of data loggers. So, to such big fleet players, uh, would something like this be of interest? Yes. So, uh, this more than this, I think uh, this product would be of more interest, which right. is uh, which is the real time data logger. This completely eradicates all wires that you. That usually typically people have. Correct. You just need to charge it once in a year or replace the battery once in a year. Right. And it will send you the temperature and humidity data right. uh, live in real time. Right. Uh, before I ask you the final uh, question, can you show us the software interface? Absolutely. Uh, you know, what kind of metrics can we look forward to? Definitely. So, uh, this is the dashboard we have. Right. Okay. So, the dashboard uh, is designed with. The first view of the dashboard is designed with the overview in mind. Mm. So, uh, a person who is using this system mm. will have around 100, sometimes in thousands, mm. 
and they need to have an overview of how the health of all their assets are doing, right. all their consignments are doing. Hmm. So uh, this this top part is the overview. Hmm. It gives an overview of how many consignments he has, hmm. how many devices it has, hmm. uh, how many uh, consignments have temperature violations, how many have light violations, how many have light violation meaning how many boxes hmm. have been tampered with, yeah, detected tampering. And, how many uh, had a fall? Yeah, how okay. many had a fall and how, what is the battery level or not? Right. So the whole idea is that the user, uh, the dashboard tells the user where he needs to pay his attention to. Right. And uh, it will just point out where he, where the um, dashboard needs needs his attention. Right. So it will color highlight those areas. Right. Oh. So that is the first part. Right. And the second part is uh, basically all your uh, consignments will be visible on the right hand side okay. as a card and when you click on them mm. uh, you can see uh, how the device has traveled. Mm. I will just click on this. How it has traveled mm. from along the way right. and the temperature, corresponding temperature. Mm. Uh, this device sends data every half an hour, okay. so wherever it has sent data, you can see the points. Yeah. And when you click on any point, you can see the temperature at that point, what it was. Okay. And it all happens, all of this data happens from this small uh, device. Right. And uh, no no connections, No, you need not worry Absolutely. about uh, SIM connectivity, nothing. Right. Everything is managed by us. Right. All you need to do is uh, drop, drop the device, what you need to track. Right, right. So, big data clearly seems to be uh, your core uh, USP. Okay. Uh, to end it up, uh, you know, your growth areas, your challenge areas over the next few quarters, you know, a lot happening in terms of uh, slowdown economy. Uh, at the same time, you are bringing in those disruptions. And uh, when it comes to the CV industry, BS6 rollout happens uh, next year. So, with these changes, uh, you know, how much uh, growth do you see in the coming quarters? Uh, growth definitely uh, in India we are seeing uh, we are seeing good traction, especially uh, in, with respect to cold chain, where the government themselves are supporting a lot of businesses uh, with tax benefits. Right. So uh, we are also exploring the market at the same time. Right. So on, uh, with respect to cold shipments and the losses that are happening, uh, IoT is where we uh, is really helping in that front have the transparency of uh, where things are going wrong. So a lot of, there's a lot of insights that if, uh, this whole chain logistics company is going to know uh, where, where, where they are doing wrong, where, where consignments are uh, having temperature excursions. So with the information of location and with the information of temperature, they are able to really have a rugged, what they call as chain. Chain is a link. Yeah. It's a link between two, three parties. So they are able to see where is the where is the weak link in the chain. And the place. Yeah. So that is where uh, the lo the combination of location and temperature. Right. Uh, any, any big challenge for you? Uh, why you do this? Uh, one of the uh, core challenges we have seen is uh, manufacturing our own indigenous deva devices right. in India uh, in competition to China. Okay. And. Uh, Compared to the facilities that they have in China, mm. uh, in India it is not yet so rich. So, um, yeah, in manufacturing uh, we are always competing directly with China, okay. directly with uh, the devices from Korea. From uh, so our competitors are mostly China and in China and Korea. Yeah. So there is that competition, but software-wise India is leading very well. Okay. And uh, electronics development. There is a little delay in time because of the components have to be sourced from China. They're right. not, they don't get manufactured in India. Otherwise, uh, yeah. yeah, otherwise, other than manufacturing, I think this is that is the reason why most of India companies gravitate towards China mm. and they try to develop it there because of the competitive advantage right. the ecosystem gives. But I'm sure uh, we are uh, we are going to have a much better ecosystem as it as we are growing as the economy we are growing so you're confident yeah, we are confident we are okay confident. thank you so much i'll end it at that thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.